I really wanted to make it clear that this was a work that was about ignored women, that I was making a monument to women. I didn't want it just to get lost in the haze of joy. Women have been washing dishes and baking pies for all eternity, and it's a thankless task, and then there's more. And so I wanted to make a monument to that kind of labor. I wanted to make a monument to what is unsung. The kitchen took five years. I was working by myself when I was doing it. The kitchen is a one-to-one -one scale kitchen that is fully encrusted, totally covered with individually applied glass beads. It's made up of a plywood exterior. Some of the components are fabricated and some of them are found, like the refrigerator is an actual refrigerator, the oven is an actual oven. I wasn't someone who was interested in craft. I hated sewing. But I walked into a bead store and just was sort of taken aback by the incredible color. And I just thought, oh my god, that's the most amazing paint I've ever seen. And not only that, but there weren't any artists in the store. There was such a, a kickback around it that was just like, oh, that's not a serious thing to do. You know, like, glitzy, ugh, that's not what serious art looks like. And that was really exciting too. It was like, oh, it doesn't look like art. Then I guess it really is. One of the stories that the Whitney often tells and we can tell well through our collection is the kind of complex relationship that artists have to identity. Liza Liu is an artist who came of age after the 1970s and the kind of height of second wave feminism, but she is living in a world that is still grappling with so many of these issues. And this is so much of what was on her mind in the early 1990s when she decided to work with a medium like beads, something that is far away from painting or traditional sculpture. I was kind of like this failed artist. I had dropped out of art school and I didn't know what to do and I kind of dragged my tail home. I had nowhere to go. I sort of had the epiphany to make the kitchen in my mother's kitchen. I would paint it and then glue beads on top of those surfaces. I was really surprised at how long everything took, but I wanted it to kind of have a sense of magic. The only way for me to have that sense was to have things really be 100%. Except to get to that, you actually have to go to this insane amount of trouble. And that disconnect between that magical spot and the labor is a really interesting tension. So there's a lot happening. It kind of, it's kind of a mix between things that are and things that aren't. On the table, every single one of those frosted flakes is made of paper mache. And then there's the newspaper. Housewife Beats the World. There's a grocery list. Sugar, butter, beer, milk, TP. Inside the sink, one of the dishes that you can see that has a red band around it and it has these little patterns. Those little patterns are germs that I found in a biology book that kind of was showing what germs look like under a microscope. It was always kind of tapping into an American pop vision around happiness. And throughout the piece, there are references to derogatory popular images of women, things that kind of piss me off. And then, to sort of really make something incongruous on the oven is a Emily Dickinson poem. She rose to his requirement, dropped the playthings of her life to take the honorable work of woman and of wife. I really wanted my daughter to see this work because I think that an artwork can stand for a certain kind of hope or a certain kind of tenacity. It can radiate. Look what happens if someone cares so deeply about something and they don't stop.